part of the MYP for this year. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good afternoon. My my name is Mr. Sam. Um, I'm the tut one of the tutors in class six. Um, uh, if, Teresa, could you put the next slide, please? Yeah. Right. Some of the things which are a big difference this year between class five and class six, um, we we would like the children to be more autonomous, um, that they um, are work independently, and that they are responsible for all the things that they do, like bringing homework, remembering to bring their their computer, um, any equipment they needed. Um, they also realize the differences in their strengths and their weaknesses, and they can work on their strengths and weaknesses. Um, one of the big differences this year for the children is they will have a lot of specialist teachers. So they will see a lot of different teachers who all work in different ways. So they need to adapt quickly, to adopt very quickly to the, the different kinds of teaching styles from the different teachers. Um, they will also have, there are three new subjects, well actually it's two, um, which Ms. Shandy will talk about later. Um, exponential science and marketing are new subjects. Global perspectives used to be what they, um, PBL and science. So it's not new, it's just a different name for an old subject. Okay, um, Mr. Mali, would it be possible Sam, um, could you mute your mic, please? You're muted. Um, okay, so can everyone hear me? Yes, but it's very noisy. Perhaps there should be more distance. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to <laughs> move to my side. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Okay, a typical, um, a typical timetable for your class six child would be like this. Um, you can see um, we start at nine o'clock and we finish at 4.30. There are two breaks during the morning, one at 11 o'clock when they normally eat a sandwich. They, ha they also have another break at 1.30 when they are given fruit to eat or sometimes it's biscuits and they have lunch at three o'clock. Um, you can see practically every two hours they're having something to eat and we think this is important obviously the the reason for the this is because of covid we need some time to change to clean the dining room so um you can see the day is a little different to last year okay so mr mario could you move to the next slide please yeah. so um Sorry. So if you can if you can change the room, it's going to be better for the sound. Otherwise, when Sam talks, then yeah, yeah, okay. change the room, change the room. It's going to be better. Um, um, we just move to each corner. No, I think you should change if 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 possible, change the room. Um. Actually, you're speaking right now, and it's not happening. But yeah. So it's hard. I just moved as far away from Mr. Sam as I can. Um, so as we've mentioned, there are two new subjects. And in the list a while ago, it looked like three. But the explanation here is that before the students had PBL um, when they were in, in their primary school. And now we d decided to split PBL to science and global perspective. So they will have two separate subjects, science and global perspectives instead of PBL. So for one, they will have science and for the other, they will be learning about history and um, other things. And the two new subjects, totally brand new, would be exponential science, wherein the students will learn how to use technology to improve the human condition or to improve our condition. So they will use um, science to solve problems. And the next one is marketing, wherein the students will learn how to use art to promote certain businesses. Um, any questions so far? Okay, Mr. Mari, could you move? Thank you so much. So um, these are the things that the students have to bring every day. They need to bring their laptop and charger not an iPad if possible. The reason why um, it's better to bring a laptop is because 
it's hard. It's really hard to have all the um, software that we use in an iPad. Sometimes, for example, with Google Docs, even though it's downloaded, sometimes it doesn't show, depending on the, or some items in a document doesn't show, especially if um, the iPad is not um, a recent model. Um, also, why the charger is important, because they will be here for like eight hours, and usually at the end of the day, they run out of um, ch um, battery charge. Um, also, they would need their mask, and a water bottle, because now we fill up the tumbler instead of drinking straight from the water fountain, which we believe is more hygienic. And what's in the next slide, please? Thank you. So these are the COVID-19 measures that we are um, practicing right now. So the students and the teachers wear a mask all day. And of course, we have staggered entry. So the year six class will be coming in at nine o'clock and also staggered exit, and they will be coming out at 4.30. So when they come in at nine o'clock, they're expected to stop at the camera so that their temperature will be checked before entering the premises. And um, all over the school, um, especially in the hallway of our year six classrooms, we have hand sanitizers installed so that the students can clean their hands every single time they go to patio or every single time they go for food. And we really encourage them to do this all the time or as many times as possible during the day. Um, instead of falling in line in a buffet, the students are served at a table during lunchtime. Um, this is a very important question. What happens if a student is sick? So during the school hours, the student can head to the nurse's office by the entrance. And the nurse will make sure that the student is, is um, able to, well, either uh, the, the nurse is uh, experienced with COVID-19 and will be able to tell if the student can go back or not. Okay, and then if a student in a class is tested positive, then the whole class will have to take lessons from home for 15 days. So during this time, the student will be accessing his, his or her homework from Google Classroom. And if there is a need to clarify something, then the student can schedule meetings with their teachers. Is there another slide? Mr. Maori, thank you. Okay, here you have the, 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 the email addresses of Ms. Shandy and myself. Um, you can also find them in St. Peter's website. Um, if you need to contact us about anything, please contact us by, by email. You can also phone the school if you, if you really have something urgent to, to say. Okay, John, next one. Um, we, we, we said at the beginning that technology is important. Students can have a mobile phone, but they should have it in silence. They should not really use it in the classroom um, unless um, it's in silence. They should have it inside their bag. And if they need to phone at the end of the day for mom or dad or someone, then they can phone. They should also ask permission to use the mobile phone, not just use a mobile phone whenever they feel like it, okay? The mobile phone is not a substitute for the computer. Okay, I think it's my turn. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sam. Um, so, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Teresa, and I'm the MYP coordinator. I also teach mathematics here in the diploma program. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit this change of curriculum and what's going on at St. Peter's with the MYP. So, as you can see here, um, we are going to speak about um, and a lot about the AYP, which stands for Middle Years Program, or PAI, if you are speaking with a, with a Spanish teacher or your Catalan teacher, um, it will, it, they will speak about PAI, which is the same as the Programa de Años Intermedios. Um, as you see, we are, we are in the middle of this graph. And I'm, I'm showing you here that it has a continuum. So the international program, the IB program, it has a primary years program for, for, for the years in primary. We are here in the middle at St. Peter's. Our middle school, middle years program goes from year six up to year 10. 
if you see the, the, the ages of the, of the students, it says 12, no? Prim primary years, it says up to 12, and then middle years, it, say, it says starting at 11. This means that the school has freedom to choose when you want to start the middle, the middle years program. So you can start uh, in year seven or in year six. And we've decided to start in year six. So this is why your kids, they belong to uh, our secondary um, school program. And, and as you see, the middle years keep going up to the diploma program. The diploma program is a program that we already have at St. Peter's and is up and running and running. And we had the accreditation three, three years ago, four years ago. And with the idea of this program being very useful for our students going to study overseas to international uh, universities or even national, national and public and private universities is very well accepted. We decided to extend down the same curriculum, the same international curriculum down to the middle years and then down to the primary years. So we are currently in the accreditation process for the middle years program. Um, which is not as much as a difference of what we had been doing at St. Peter's. Maybe it would be um, your, your kids will see a difference coming from primary because they will have different lots of teachers, specialists, and they will, they will be asked to have more freedom and more choices and to have more you know, um, decisions made. But as per what we used to do as a, as a content, as subjects, etc. Um, is pretty much the same. So the students will still have, <coughs> sorry, will still have, you know, the science classes, the mathematics classes. And the idea is that we already were um, kind of like letting them be a little bit more independent and they had more, they, they were more invested in what they were doing in class. This was already happening in primary and they will, they will kind of be doing the same here in secondary. So the MYP curriculum, as, as it is, it's based on, on an inquiry-based curriculum and it follows the inquiry, the inquiry cycle. With this, we mean that the kids will, the students will be able to ask questions. They will be able to do something, take an action, go to the lab. Eventually, we really want them to go to the science lab and start experimenting. And, you know, I have all the science teachers craving to go to the science lab. Eventually, we'll be able to. Um, they can do an experiment, they can test a variable, they can decide on an exper experimental setup and they will redefine, they will re reflect, rethink and redefine. So that's the inquiry cycle. And the idea that this is happening already in different subjects, in science is happening, in, in social sciences as well. But we did have some other subjects that they were more difficult to do, for example, in mathematics or, for example, in in, I don't know, let me, let me think in maybe in, in, in the languages. So the idea now is that within this curriculum, the kids will be more um, involved in thinking about what they are doing, asking questions to themselves. Uh, what can I do to improve this? Um, what are my strengths? What are, what are my weaknesses? A little bit more support from the side of the teachers, but more autonomy from the, from the side of the students within this cycle I was explaining, the inquiry cycle. And from home, I don't think you will see a big difference on they need to keep reading, they need to keep doing you know, mathematics, they will do projects, they will do presentations and the, the communication is still, still pretty important. So as the content, besides the different new subjects that they will be, they will be um, following this year is pretty much the same as we used to do at St. Peter's. There is a main difference, I uh, will tell you in a minute, uh, Mitroshin will, is about the assessment, how we will be assessing or how this curriculum uh, lets us assess the students and we think is, is, is a quite uh, positive way of, of assessing for like an improvement from the one we had. Mr. Joan. Can you go to the next one? I'm just going to show you the IB learner profile because maybe your 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 son or your daughter comes comes home with um, speaking about it. I'm sure they will because the teachers are speaking with them in these terms. So the idea is that we want our students, and as 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 we all see something that we already were doing here at St. Peter's, we want them to be um, risk takers. Uh, we want them to 
feel safe to make mistakes no in class and or ask questions and learn from those um be critical thinkers as i was saying communicators so languages are still very important english spanish um they have catalan they have french uh inquires no so put, putting this seat in into them for them to become interested in what they are learning etc so this is this is what's round up as a as an IV profile the skills we want our students to to have or to improve and it's and it's, it has um continuity so the the little ones in primary in the primary school they are going to start working on this on these skills as we move towards middle years as well and in the diploma program they they should become proficient in those in those skills next mr joan thank you uh, this is just a summary. Uh, as I was telling you, the MYP has gives uh, St. Peter's an international profile and curriculum with the diploma program at the end. is based on inquiry and and it's, it's conceptual. It's, it's quite, um, when we plan our lessons, it's quite based on concepts as well. We don't, we don't want to go there. We had a, an MYP meeting, I think, in June, and we already went through everything. And we can do it again if, you know, if we need to. But is is mainly for the students. They will see that there is more an inquiry circle going on, and the assessment the assessment is what is different from last year. And this is what Ms. Roshin will explain in a minute. Um, and this is is understood as um as an individual improvement. As a as a, I'm I'm kind of comparing to myself and how am I growing and how am I learning, and I'm not being compared with the rest of the class. So this is something that we think is quite beneficial for the students. Um, and I think that's it from my side. Okay, thank Juan. you. Juan, yes, thank you. Okay, I don't know if perhaps um, some of the parents would like a change into Spanish. Maybe if, if that's so, let me know. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll carry on in English then. Okay, so um, as Teresa was explaining before, um, there, there aren't really any important changes when it comes to the methodology and the way we're teaching and what subjects we're teaching. Um, however, when it comes to the assessment, that is a big change. And we think it's a, a great improvement because um, we, have, we have improved the way we're assessing our students in terms of them growing and then being able to reflect on where they can improve on and instead of being just compared to others with a grade okay so um i'll try to explain this in a simple way i i warn you it's not simple okay so um first of all don't worry if it's not very clear for this first time it happens to everybody we it took us a while as well to get our head around things um but don't worry because we'll be there to explain it to you as many times as you need you'll also be having meetings with the, with mr sam and miss shandy so any questions or any doubts you may have about assessment we'll be happy to to clarify them okay but generally speaking i'll see if i can i can make it pretty clear so you will see, as you see in this slide, we have uh, these different colors. They correspond to the different groups of subjects. OK, so, for example, if we focus on, on the first one, it says language and literature. Here uh, we would include Spanish and English. OK, and uh, both Spanish and English uh, will be assessing different criterions. OK. In the next one, which is language acquisition. Sorry, no, Joan. Thank you. The, the next group of languages would have, for example, French and Catalan. OK, just so you have an idea. These are not uh, particular uh, subjects, but groups of subjects. OK, so from now on, one of the big changes you will see and <clears throat> the students will see is that we will no longer be grading on a 10 base. OK, so we won't be grading from zero to 10 anymore. And this is a big change. They all know because we've we've had meetings with them and we have explained to them and they were all, oh, my God, no more tens. How terrible. <laughs> but I think they're getting they're getting the idea. OK, so um, the main changes, as I say, there won't be any more nines and tens. So our, our highest grade will be an eight. OK, so students will be um, assessed uh, on an eight. 
and then for each piece of work they hand in or for each presentation they do or for each test they do etc cetera, etc cetera, all the different types of work they they'll be doing they will know which criterions the teacher will be taking into account okay um there might be one piece of work where the teacher says i'm only going to be looking at one criteria okay it's like producing a text for it would be only criterion c okay mm -hmm. so looking at that criteria the teacher would give them from a zero to to an eight okay so by the end of the of the the semester but that's another change by the end of the semester the teacher will have enough information from each criterion from each subjects to be able to give a grade so what do we do if you show me the next one joan please just to give you an example in language and literature in the first block the red block that we saw before if you just focus focus on criterion a it's very detailed okay so in a is not just knowing and understanding and letting the teacher decide how much the student knows or not we're giving the rubrics okay so for example if the student is writing a text a uh, about a description for example of the character in a book we'll be able to see if the student uses limited relevant terminology or if it consistently uses a wide range of terminology effect effectively so given this rubric we'll be able to grade the piece of work that that criterion okay from a zero to an eight as you can see so <clears throat> by the end of the semester, we have to grade all the criterions. Because we have four criterions and the highest grade is an eight, we would have a maximum of 32 points, okay? This is where it becomes tricky because first we have, it's based on an eight, then it's added up. And then if you show me the next one, uh, Joan, please. So here you see, uh, you look at the boundaries, so if, the the addition of the criterions takes you up to a 25 you would go and between 24 and 27 would give you a final grade that would be a six now the final grade here's the second the the other change the final grade is not out of eight but it's out of seven okay so now this may sound quite confusing the which which it is at the beginning okay but the students will be doing this throughout the next six months before they actually get a report okay so they're going to be very used to all this by the time they get the report they're also going to be given the information not only i'll be assessing criterion a but i will be specifying what i'm looking for and what i'm assessing in criterion a so by the as years go by they'll be, they'll be quite expert in knowing what type of criterions there are in each subject Okay, and what we expect from them. The good thing is that when, when they get um, their work, for example, um, returned to them, we'll be able to explain where, um, where they're making a mistake and how they can improve. So the next time they do a presentation, we expect them to have improved on that because we'll be giving them the tools and the resources to improve. So, so hopefully this is really going to be to be good to be able to give detailed feedback and to see how they're they're growing. Okay. Thank you, Teresa, for answering the question. Okay. So um, moving on to the the other um, change. Up until now, we have been used to having our report card uh, each term. Yes, and this is the other the other change is that we'll be assessing them every six months okay it'll be more of a semester than a trimester however given that this is the first year we're doing we're implementing the myp and that we all need to get our heads around everything we decided to send um a, an eval a pre evaluation report um by december Okay, so uh, in December, you will receive something similar to this that you can see where it will give you a grade, remember, out of seven, which is the final maximum grade. Um, and you will give you a, a general idea on how your son or daughter is doing in each subject. 
Having said this, this was just for you to have this on paper, right on screen, but um, the students will know, they'll know how they're doing because they'll be getting constant feedback on how they're doing and how their progress is. And the teachers, especially the tutors, will be going over each subject with them because this is one of the, the main changes when they move up to upper school, that tutors go through all the different subjects with the, with the students to see how they're doing and they communicate with the other teachers. <clears throat> excuse me, in order to to make this uh, work um, for them, okay? So uh, finally, the report they will be receiving, the official report that we, they will receive um, at the end of January and at the end, well, in June, would be something like this. Joanne, would you mind, please? Thank you. So for example, you see the first semester, you'll have the achievement levels out of eight, so you will have the achievement level for each criterion. So in language and literature, that he got a four for criterion B, a six, um, sorry, for A, a six for B, a two for C, and an eight for D, okay? So you would add those up, and remember, you'd go to the page where you'd have the boundaries, and it would give you the grade out of seven, okay? Um, just so you, just so you... <laughs> Don't panic too much. This this presentation will be will be recorded. Okay, so you'll be able to go back to it if you have any doubts. And as I say, we'll be there to explain it as many times as necessary. But it's not as difficult as it initially seems to be. Okay. So so yes, that's it. Uh, the final grade will be out of seven. That's what you'll get the first semester. Then the second semester you will get the same, and then. At the end of the year, you'll have the final grade, okay, the final school grade. And in this case, we will be converting it to a Spanish grade in case anybody needed to have a final Spanish grade because they're moving or for any other reasons. Okay, so I think I've, I've overloaded you with lots of sevens and eights and, <laughs> and different numbers. Um, do you have any questions? Well, that's good then. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, well, as I said, we'll we'll explain and we'll be meeting up more times, and especially with your tutors, and we'll be going over everything. So, and also remember, this is the first year of MYP, so they have a long way ahead of them to to get really used to. As a matter of fact. Um, uh, this this year group will be the first one to complete the MYP from the very beginning to the end. So it's very we're very excited about that. All our other years are are starting in the second year or in the third year of MYP. So that makes it more challenging. But with with your children, we'll be starting from from the first year. So it's it's actually very exciting. I'm sure it will be a great success. So. So if nobody has any questions, um, well, all I can say is thank you very much for coming. And we look forward to being in touch with you throughout the year. And well, that's it. Muchas gracias por venir a todos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hasta luego. Bye. Hasta luego, gracias. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye.